after the 2016 election, the general elections, I told the party, the mandate for the Central Committee is finished. We should move and have elections for the Central Committee. They didn't listen. Do you know what they called me at that time? A rebel. I was a rebel, trying to tell them to stick to the constitution. I was a rebel. Today, they are nominating and appointing people into the Central Committee. The people who are supposed to be expelling me, who have no mandate. If we are going to count, if the President is allowed to appoint three members of the Central Committee, let's allow him the Secretary General. One, the Deputy Secretary General. Two, three, name another person. The rest of them, where are they? Where are they from? How have they come in? So in there has been no general conference. Act. So in as far as you're concerned, that exposes is null and void? I was saying to the Patriotic Front, and I'm still saying now, let's follow the law. This is a party in power. We must live by example. We must not do things willy-nilly. No. We are a party in power and we must follow we must follow our own constitution first of all and then follow the republican constitution if we're not following our republican constitution and our party constitution are we fit to govern now we have others like uh, i mean uh, i mean um, mr chimbakamwili who was expelled he decided to go and just form his party we have kalaba who decided who thought there was too much corruption in the party and decided to disengage with the PF. Why don't you take the same road? Why are you still sticking to them if you feel, I mean, the can't sticking, even... Sticking with who? Uh, with the PF. <laughs> you can form your own party. It's my party. Uh -huh. you can I have worked... Own... No, Zach. What's that's the not, party? That's not, the party no, 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 no. Gentlemen uh -huh. do not run away from problems. Mm -hmm. They stick and fight. But going to court is going to be more embarrassing for the party. Have you seen me go to court? No. I've been giving them time to think. Have you ever seen an ordinary member of the party being served an expulsion letter by the Deputy Secretary General of the party? She calls me an entity. My own sister from our little town of Mufler. She calls me an entity, but she dares to come to my office to serve me a letter. Deputy Secretary General, serving an ordinary member. She knows who I am in this party. So she knows what I'm capable of doing, Zach. So she mustn't play. She knows exactly what I can do. I don't want a fight. I want us to think and resolve this matter. Properly. But they seem adamant, like nothing is going to happen. Adamant so to what's who? your game plan then? No, no, no. <laughs> no general, Zach, no general will ever discuss his battle plans, his strategies in the public. Nobody. My plans, my strategies will remain very close to my chest. So on that one, you forgive me. Mm -hmm. I cannot discuss such things here. But I'm giving them time to think. I'm giving them time to reason. They don't seem phased at all. Well, I am not even phased myself. <laughs> am I phased? First of all, does the PF pay me? I've been putting money into this party. I've been putting energy and time into this party. Do they pay me? They don't. What have I gained from the PF? Not one government contract not one piece of corruption not one appointment that i can say is worth naming none so as far as i'm concerned i've been building something for them but they don't seem to understand that this party has got a foundation if they've lost the plot we know where the plot is so if they've failed to lead that's me how much do you love this party? Would you like oh. to see it just... Uh, oh, I love this I mean, party. Then. break and... I mean, if, if they want us to destroy the PF, we'll uh -huh. destroy it. Uh -huh. But not because I want to, but because they're not allowing us to reason. Some of us love thinking, but I know for some people thinking is painful. So are you ready to fight to the last drop of your blood? <laughs> I wouldn't say to the last drop of my blood. I'm only prepared to give my blood to my Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. not for a human being. I'm not that kind of person, no. But it's very clear that under Article 51, only 30 members of the Central Committee must exist. 25 must be elected at the General Conference. There have never been elections since 2011. 
So who's to blame? 2011, there was the founder, father. How come? 2016, I have uh -huh. said, I told them, we need to do this. I was vice chairman elections. I told them, we need to go for elections for the central committee. Remember, in 2014, we went only to elect one person, a candidate, for the presidential race, for the 2015 elections, by election. That was the president. After that, we didn't need to elect the president. That's why in 2016, President Edgar Lungu continued, because we already had a candidate. So that's why you didn't bother? That's why we didn't bother in 2016 for the presidency. Uh -huh. But I told them, the members of Central Committee's mandate has run out. They should go and have their mandate renewed. Now, the Constitution provides for an extraordinary general conference. They could have called it. They didn't want. They thought I was being mischievous. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Now, um, you've maintained, however, that you are the game changer. Does this mean you will contest the presidency as PF at the PF convention? <laughs> Is there going to be a PF convention? That when you read the constitution I'm referring to, mm -hmm. before you get the general conference and then the actual convention itself, all the provinces must have elections, must have elections. So far, only four provinces have held elections. Six have not. Is put, it because put, of the put, COVID no, 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 no. It's because of the maladministration. If they had listened to me in 2016, would have started that time. COVID just came three months, four months ago. They can't blame it on COVID. No. It's maladministration. Being put in positions and you don't know what to do. That's the problem. You can't have people running a party when they don't know what to do. When was the last time this party constitution was read by those people who were supposed to be administering this party to understand what the founding father intended, what we intended in drafting this kind of constitution? We knew that we needed delegates to go to the general conference and the actual convention. You must only do that after the delegates are elected. Now, Northwestern Province had elections, Copper Belt had elections, Eastern Province had elections. I forget the other one. But the others have not had elections. Six, which is the majority, have not had elections. Where are the delegates going to come from? You do something wrong again, you want to rape the constitution again? We keep raping the constitution? Why have a constitution if you can't obey it? Why? I keep asking. The law is there so that we have parameters. The law is there so that we know how to behave towards each other. This is about the constitution of the party. But what about what we've heard in the past that according to the PF leadership, you are not even eligible to even attend the convention because you're not in the party structure. I don't need to be a delegate to stand as president of the PF. So what does the constitution say? Article 52, very good question there. Mm -hmm. Article 52 reads, for the election of the president to office of president, a candidate shall indicate to the secretary general of the party his intention to stand for the office of president of the party not less than a day before the general conference. A candidate, not a delegate. A candidate. A candidate. Anyone in the party can stand. Anyone can be a candidate. Anyone. It doesn't say from the delegates. It doesn't say that. The problem is you have people who are not lawyers. So even to within 24 hours, if you, you decide that's to, it. if you want to stand, you can just go and tell the that. secretary general I'm standing. And if you have massed enough support within the delegates, you stand. That's what this says. And the reason we put this up is we knew there will be people like the current administration. Who would want to confuse things? We're trying to avoid that. And Rasata knew that. So what are you going to do to make sure that they follow the uh, constitution to the last? You're going back to my strategy, Jack. You're going so you back don't to want to talk about no, it? No, no, no. No general discusses strategies on, on, on air. Not in the public. No. We have a strategy. We have a strategy. Huh? Let them live. Let them enjoy. They think they've got things under control. They think 
My name is Akibia. They should only underestimate you as their own parent. Oh. Oh. Oh, Zach. Now you are hitting the nail on the head. <laughs> How beautiful. I am saying that as far as I'm concerned, I am a candidate. I don't need to be a delegate to be a candidate. That's the law. I'm reading from the Constitution. It's right here. Article 52, sub clause 2. A candidate shall indicate. All I have to do is tell the Secretary General, this is what I want to do. But uh, so a lot of people now are wondering then why so much acrimony towards you and your intentions to challenge <laughs> the incumbent at the convention? Is this a sign of diminishing uh, interest? To me, it's simple. One, I stand by the party constitution. Number two, I stand by the truth. Three, I cannot be easily corrupted. I'm principled. So for me, I don't want anybody to rape this constitution, which we fought so hard to put into place. But that seems like it's al already being raped, isn't it? Well, let, let, them, let them rape the constitution only to their parents. Because right now, they can't stand on an anthill and start condemning other political parties for not following their constitution, for not holding conventions. They have no moral right because they're doing the same. Now, so I'm sure a lot of people are asking, so what next in case you're not elected as peer president at the convention? Do we still see you on the ballot? <laughs> <laughs> I am here as a presidential candidate. I am running for president. I don't need permission by any means. From, <laughs> I don't need permission from anybody to stand. It is my democratic right. I am going to exercise it and I shall fight to exercise it. Nobody has the right to stop me to stand in this country. But is I have made president, Zach. So what can stop you from making my vehicle you can use to stand as president? My point, uh -huh. Zach, you're going into strategy again. You see what I'm trying to say? You're going into strategy. Huh? I have said, if they want us to destroy the patriotic front, let us destroy it. But for me, I respect the old man so much. The man who founded this So for the sake of the old man, can I am still here. Party? I am still here because of the old man. Not for anyone else. I'm still here. I don't want the old man turning in his grave and say, did I put anything in this young man? No, we worked together with that man. And I want him to know that he has left soldiers out here who are going to stand protect and defend the constitution as by PF established. It shall not be raped by any Tom, Dick and Harry. I don't care who. That's not the way it works. No. We so, shall fight. So in as far as you're concerned, you're going to fight up until, I mean, uh, the constitution is formed. It's like going to, to court. Do you only go to court today? This party constitution doesn't tell me when I can go to court. Like, No. I'm giving them time to think. I'm giving, the, I mean, Mumbipiri, my sister from Muflira, said, no, let him just apply. Hey, we can reinstate him. If I reapply, I'll be agreeing to the decision that they took. And I'm saying they had no jurisdiction in the first place to take this decision. Let me just go back to this, because I want people to understand that. The, the people quorum, want to know where you are Exactly. What the quorum, for, the yeah. quorum, Zach. The quorum at any meeting of the Central Committee is half. Half. To form a quorum. To form a quorum. Mm -hmm. Half of uh, 30. Is half 15? of 30. Uh -huh. So far, I have told you the president is there, the vice president is there, the secretary general appointed, I must add, by the president. The deputy secretary general appointed. Let's throw in Uncle ABC, three appointed members of Central Committee. The president is done. He has appointed three. What about the others? The 27. Who, where are they coming from? Because we have not heard the general conference. Now, are these people half of the Quran? Of course not. We cannot allow a dictatorship to start creeping into the PF. I will not allow it. Let's follow the law. The letter of the law. The law says half. There was no half. There was no Quran. They have no jurisdiction. They have no power to even entertain this application. So they are First of all, illegal. The, and the other thing is, the person who took the matter there, the Lusaka province uh, ex-officio, member of Central Committee, Paul Monga, an appointee, 
What jurisdiction did he have? What was the case? The case is I had expressed an intention to stand. Is that an offense? Are we going to criminalize ambition, Zach? Which country are we living in? Are we in the dark ages? Oh, give me a break. No. No. Ambition is not a crime, Zach. You, since childhood, have been ambitious to be somebody. I am ambitious now of becoming a president. What is wrong with that? Some people never, never even had ambitions. But here, I mean, in this country, a lot of people are criticized for being too ambitious. No, yeah. he's too ambitious. <laughs> too ambitious. <laughs> no. Oh, gee, let me in, tell you. In each and let, every let, party, let, like let, let me call. Let, <laughs> let, no let me even go further so that people may understand. Article 57 gives the qualifications of how you become a member of Central Committee. Article 57 of the PF Constitution. What does it say? I'll say it. I'll read it. Mm -hmm. Those that should be elected will be elected at the general. But this is the qualification. Candidate to be elected to be a member of Central Committee must belong to the Patriotic Front and must be a member of the party five years preceding his election or nomination. I can name names here, which I don't want, of people who are in that Central Committee who did not belong and do not belong to the PF for more than five years. How are we flouting this constitution? Are we blind? How are we allowing this? A person who has not been in the Patriotic Front Party for more than five years is a member of Central Committee. How is that happening? How? You tell me that. Once the law is laid down, it is laid down. If they say for you to be a judge, you must have practiced law for at least ten years. How can you be a judge one year at the bar? Are we joking? Let's stop playing games. This is the constitution of the party. Let's respect it. The people who have been appointed and nominated, some of them have not been in this party for more than five years. They want to come and expel me. But do we respect who the constitution? Who was there campaigning for the original president of this party? Do we completely respect the constitution at any given level? It is, it is, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's a very good question. Uh -huh. Do we? But, but, but I, I, I don't want to answer it for them. Uh -huh. I am saying I am going to respect the constitution. I am not only in this party as an ordinary member. I am a lawyer by profession. I have sworn to protect and defend the constitution of this country as well as this constitution of the party as by law established. And Article 60 of the current constitution today as we speak tells me that the constitution of any political party must be in tandem with the constitution of the republic. So if they conflict, the constitution of the republic must prevail. So here, I am insisting. So is the let us follow constitution the constitution in tandem with the, with the national When we set it up, yes, we did. Once upon a time. And it is still supposed to be, uh -huh. but it's the administration which is rotting at the core. The administration is wrong. That's the problem we have. Now you've been uh, very critical about the current uh, leadership, uh, both uh, in the PF and of course at national level. What has this government done wrong in governing this country? Where have we gone wrong? Because <laughs> I'm afraid you criticize them uh, uh, often. Uh, so where, where have they gone wrong? Zach, let's be serious. Mm -hmm. I want you to be very serious when you ask that question. I'm extremely serious. I hope I love you are. Country. I, every I hope being. you are serious when you ask me that question. <laughs> I'm extremely serious. Listen and listen good. It does not need KBF to tell you what is wrong with this country's acts. Every woman on the street knows what is wrong with this country. Every youth on the street knows what is currently wrong with this country. Every teenage boy selling tomatoes and biscuits knows what is wrong with this country. Every taxi driver on the street knows what is wrong with this country. Every civil servant knows what is wrong with this current country right now. Everybody knows. Unless you're telling me you're the only Jew <laughs> who doesn't know. Let's be serious there. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. You ask me a question, uh -huh. let me enjoy answering. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Feel free. As far as I'm concerned, everybody knows what's wrong with this country. We all know. Just stop pretending. The truth of the matter is we all know what is wrong with this country. One word. 
leadership. That's what's wrong. That's what's wrong, Zach. The foundational problem here is lack of leadership. That's it. So the leadership has failed. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. You know it, I know it. Let's not pretend. We know. That's the problem. Now, if we know that, let's fix it. And that is why I am running for president. Is to fix that one. Once we fix that one and put in systems that are going to respect the constitution of the party, respect the national constitution, then we've begun a system that is going to be well and founded. That is all. That's what's wrong. So if you hear me speak passionately about what is wrong, you hear me speak about how to correct things, that is my beginning point. So I mean, when we look at the PF, I mean, you, you being part of them when they started, what had you envisioned for this country? Are we where we're supposed to be? No, we're not. What we had envisaged was, first of all, as a cornerstone, bringing back the rule of law. Remember, we were coming from a background of condemning the movement for multi-party democracy and that been corrupt. We have dived into that hook, line and sinker. If every other minister, every other director, every other PS, every other somebody being arrested, taken over to the Anti-Corruption Commission, what has gone wrong? I have just told you. Did corruption just start now? Or no. You've been existing in this country for quite a while? No, but I'm talking about my party. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about other people. I'm talking about the party. The foundation of this party was to... We intended to come and get rid of corruption. We intended to come and establish the rule of law. We intended to govern by the rule of law. If you remember, the late president, Michael Sass, said he was going to govern using the Ten Commandments. That's the law. It's a moral law, but it's the law. There is no law in this world that does not emanate from the Ten Commandments. Do not covet. Steal. Do not kill. It's murder. It's manslaughter. It's, it's, it's infanticide. Every law comes from there. We just break it down. It, 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 it's a moral issue, but it's made legal by man. So that's what the, the president meant when he said you exactly. governed by the Ten Commandments. Yeah, exactly, because he knew. He knew what he had been through. We understood what he was fighting for. When we were in the legal committee, if you allow me to name names here, of the, 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 the old man then, we had uh, State Council John Murwila, we had State Council Bonaventure Mutali, we had State Council Obi Muganga, we had myself, and the Central Committee member who was acting as a liaison was Anton Kasol. Bamudala never did anything without consulting that legal unit. He understood why he needed Abakalamba to be there. People who are seasoned lawyers to guide him. If you remember, one of the big mistakes that he made in announcing his first cabinet, he nominated 10 people. I was one of the first people to call him. I told him, no, boss, Marufianya, you only allowed 8. Oh, Wushenindufianya. Yes. Quickly he dropped the late William Sander and he dropped Wasame Mukupa following the rule of law. He was not embarrassed. He was advised. He stuck to the constitutional provisions. He was not embarrassed to make a mistake but correct himself. Are we doing that today? Are we doing it, Zach? If we go against the constitution of the country, we go against the constitution of the party, I will fight. That's why I'm here. No, you you talked about uh, I mean corruption. When you talk, when you look at the fight against corruption, can any regime just get rid of corruption entirely, or is it embedded in the culture of the Zambian? Because <laughs> <laughs> at every corner, uh, wherever you go, people have become very corrupt. Unfortunately, we are not running a chiefdom. The president is not a paramount chief; is a political figure. So yes, we can get rid of corruption if we have the right set of thinking, the right mindset. We can get rid of corruption. It seems every regime just. But if you go in, if you go in yeah. and you start thinking you're a paramount chief, and therefore people must pay homage to you by giving you goats and chickens, then then corruption begins. There's a problem. We can't. A president is not a chief. 
he is an elected official. Chiefdom is by blood. There's a difference. We must distinguish that. You can never remove a chief. Only the traditional rulers can remove a chief. But the president can be removed by not being elected. So if a president fails to adhere to the constitution, yes, he can be removed. If a president fails to live by the mandate of his manifesto or the party manifesto, yes, he can be removed. That is why the president must always read the party manifesto in tandem with the party constitution and say, what did we intend? How are we going to move this agenda and make sure that we're traveling at the same level? You don't go there with your personal agendas as president. No, you don't. You go in with your personal agendas, you've missed the point. This is the whole city, and of course, uh, we talk into 2021 presidential hopeful Kelvin Fubebualia, popularly known as KBF. And of course, later on, we open the line so that you can uh, find out whatever you want to find out from this gentleman on our program this morning. Now, when we look at the economy, uh, the economy front, a lot of people will say there's COVID-19 and it has impacted almost the whole, the entire universe negatively. Uh, well, uh, so how is then this regime to blame for what's obtaining when it comes to the economy? <laughs> COVID-19 is four months old. Are the problems we are facing four months old? No. I have said there has been a systematic maladministration and hence people have failed to understand. Some of us have taken time and on the economic front, Zach, I want you to look at this book. Mm -hmm. I'm not bragging but I'm saying I have taken time to That's identify... That's the second one. I read the yes, first one. This is Zambia one. Must Prosper number two. Uh -huh. I have taken time out to study the problems this country is faced up with. I have taken out time to engage some of the best brains this country has ever produced. I have done research with my research team. We have delved into the agricultural sector, into the transport sector. We have delved into the production cities that we intend to build, the mining sector. We have delved into every area that you think can make this nation prosper. When you ask me questions on the economic front, this program is not long enough. Long enough to do No, that. <laughs> because this is something I'm very passionate about. And I know the cry of especially our youths on the streets. Four million jobs right now are needed to help the youth gain some sort of semblance of normality. I heard, for instance, the government has given six million dollars for aquaculture and they've given 30 million kwacha for artists and other things. Let's break it down, Zach. Six million dollars, today's rate, is approximately 120 million kwacha. Add the 30 million kwacha that the artists have been given, you're talking of 150 million kwacha. If I was to say anybody to start a reasonable business as a youth is about 30,000 kwacha, only 5,000 youths will get that money. We need 4 million youths off the street to give them jobs. So Does that make sense to so you? So that's a drop in the ocean. You don't need reactive, knee-jerk kind of reactions. No. You need to think, plan, systematically. Not because they are Papa Abe Chongo, No, no. So you think the government is being reactive? The government is being reactive. They're not being proactive. They haven't sat down to think. That's the problem. That's why everything is overwhelming them. Some of us have taken time to think. We've planned. This book... What about critics who would say it's easier said than done? Oh, because yes. That is what they've said. But have they done any research? I want them to put the book here. Are you, I can challenge them. There are facts and figures in this book. Facts and figures. Figures don't lie. Facts and figures. Figures don't lie. Look at the figures. Challenge me based on the evidence. Empirical data is here. So it's not a question of just waking up and dreaming, I'm going to give you 30 million kwacha. No, no, no. What are you doing? What is it for? Okay, let's, use, let's say the criteria is that the artists are going to be given 30 million kwacha. Which artists? Those that dance at State House? What's the criteria? Those that sing gospel music? Which artists? Those that sing Dununa Rivers? Which artists? How are you going to arrive at who is going to be given this money? 
What are you trying to promote? So I'm sure therein lies the problem where you don't even know who you're going to My put the money. My point, uh -huh. first of all. Second of all, do the artists have a studio where they can rush to? A government or parastatal studio where they can say, I can go and record my music for free there. Or I can go and build something there. No, they have to hire studio time. If there are mistakes, they have to go back. That 30,000 kocha per youth is a drop in the ocean. We're not being proactive. We're being reactive because there's a problem. No, but no, it's like umwana alila sweet zax. Mompira ka ka sugar mukanwati no talalako. That's not the way you solve economic problems. It's not. And Vasata knew that. That is why that man we miss him, some of us. Because he used to listen. Even with his very humble education, Vasata used to listen. He could argue with you, but he could listen. The problem we have right now is there's a bit of arrogance in some of the ministers today. There's a bit of arrogance at the secretariat of the party. People think they know it all. No. Ask and you shall be educated. Have you ever tried to advise oh, the current regime? Oh, many times. Oh, many times, Zach. Even here, this book has reached His Excellency the President. I sent a copy to him. I sent a copy to his economic advisor. I sent a copy to his political advisor then, Kays Azul. Have they read it? Ask them. It's a good question. You ask them. I am not worried about who implements what's in here. No, come on. Give it out. It's out there. Imply, imp employ it. Use it. If you don't want to use it, don't say I have no ideas. No. I've given you my ideas. I have never seen anybody castigate me, criticize me on what I've put in this book. Nobody. Not even the opposition. Not just PF. Not even the opposition. Some people are saying, I've seen adverts. No. Uh, someone will fix it. Someone will fix it. Fix what? I have said how I'm going to fix it. The person you're saying will fix it. Has he told you how he's going to fix it? When you're dealing with economic issues, Zach, we should be serious. It is not just a question of saying, I'll fix it. Fix what? Have you done the research? I have. Have you identified the problem? Properly. But, I mean, politicians, they come up with things that people can buy into. You know, uh, simplicity. You know, simple things. I'll do this. I'll do that. that. And is Zambians, why, buy, that Zambians is, buy into that. Is why exactly. I am that's why we're here. With the greatest of respect, mm -hmm. we cannot oversimplify a big problem such as the economic problem we're faced up with. Four million jobs for the youths is not a simple matter, and I'm dead serious about creating those jobs. I know how. And we have friends, we have started pushing that agenda already. This is a blueprint for the rapid economic transformation of this country. To transform, first of all, it attacks your ignorance. It damages your ignorance. Puts ideas into you. You get excited. Anyone who has read this book, Zach, is not the same. Anyone. I challenge you to read it. You will not be the same. I know you've read number one. Read number two. It's Bruce Lee reloaded. Ah! Enter the dragon. Because <laughs> somebody would say you're part of a regime that came far by telling us we're going to be paying lower taxes, more money in our pockets. Thank you. That is just a dream. No, we saw that no, 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 uh, Zach, uh, with no, 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 why? Because we sold them what we knew. But here's a problem. Some of us who sat in the boardroom, my particular boardroom at my office, to plan for this country, what we intended to do, are not in this government. You go and bring people from outside who are not there in the planning phase. You expect them to understand what we planned. What do they know? They've come with their corrupt minds. They've come with their corrupt ideas. So what do they bring? They bring corruption. Honestly. You kick out MMD, you bring them back. The roundabout man. How do you expect to get rid of corruption? Why? Why do we bring them back? Are we short of leadership? No. It's for the convenience of somebody. Now that is not me. I am saying the dream that we had, the vision that we had, can still be relieved. In fact, in this book, I am saying it's lower taxes reloaded. More money in your pocket, reload it. Because what I've put in this book, Zambia must prosper too, is achievable and it can be done. 
This is a social science. Politics is, is a social science. I'm a social scientist myself. It's empirical data gathered here. Because I'm, I'm looking, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, are we at the threshold of being sold another dream by people telling us they'll do this and that and well, knowing that they won't even live to what they're saying? I Just because they want to occupy office and they tell us what we want to hear. No, that. They thrive I am, on that. I am a believer. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I believe in one scripture Habakkuk 2, verse 2. Write the vision down, make it clear. My vision is right here. It is clear. You can, you can hold me accountable to Zambia must prosper too. From a spiritual perspective, a moral perspective, a political perspective, and an economic perspective. That is my vision. It's right here. I have seen no other politician who has put his vision down and claimed he can do it. Except for Basata when we did it with him. No other politician. This is a hot set. Now let's talk about the issue of Bill 10, which uh, was supposed to be debated in Parliament last month, was postponed to allow parliamentarians to adapt to the new environment in Parliament. What is your view on the bill which some stakeholders want withdrawn? Bill 10? Yes, the issue of Bill 10. <laughs> in a nutshell, Zach, Bill 10, with the greatest respect to the people that want it, is a waste of time, a waste of resources, a waste of focus, a waste of energy. Right now, we have more serious, pertinent problems to attend to than Bill 10. Bill 10 has got hidden agendas. And the agendas, I'll say this, are not noble, and they are not good for the Zambian people. In the current form, no. It should not even visit Parliament anymore. Let it die. I mean, uh, when you say hidden agendas, what agendas would you say are hidden there? Anyone, who, hidden anyone who has read Bill 10 uh -huh. will understand. But recently, my young brother, uh, uh, Brian Munduvili, chairperson, legal, in the PF, said that they must get rid of Article 52 because it will block Valum from standing. Now, if that's not an in window telling you something, then you must be blind. Why do they want Article 52 removed? I'm giving you an example. Why do they want that particular article removed? Because it's very clear what it's bound to do. And it's in tandem with the PF Constitution, if you allow me to read. When you read on the qualifications of a president, for example, and members of Central Committee, one of the qualifications of the president of the PF, once elected, is that he must qualify to stand in the Republican Constitution clauses. He must qualify. You must be a Zambian, you must be above 35, elected at a conference or convention, but you must also qualify in the Republican Constitution. Now the Republican Constitution, as you know, is flying in the teeth of a certain candidate. So they want Article 52 removed so that you're only able to challenge after his election. So that's the only... No, no, the there, there, the only there are lots of things. I've given you an example. Mm -hmm. um, Bill 10 is another subject, Zach. Mm -hmm. You need two hours mm -hmm. to invite me here to discuss Bill 10. But I've given you the core of an innuendo which they want to bring hidden. We can't allow that. I will not be part of an illegality. So when we look at the current situation it's, uh, in, uh, in its current form, do you think it has lacunas? Do they need to be addressed before the next general elections? Or we can go with it just the way it is and there won't be any, I mean... On the 5th of January 2016, mm -hmm. my president, Edgar Chagwalungu, proudly rode into the Hero Stadium and signed this current constitution, amended constitution. 5th of January 2016. Hardly four years, five years, we want amendments. For what? This constitution is good enough. Let's go with it. If we need to change the constitution, let it so be another time. The issue of the 14 days, oh, let's just... It's it a waste of it's time. Neither here nor there. It's, a, it's, it's a smoke screen, Zach. It's a smoke screen. It's for small mind. Huh? We don't need this right now. The resources being spent on Bill 10 can be spent creating jobs for the youth. The resources being used, we are hearing now, 
to corrupt opposition leaders. It, it's, come on. Let's be serious. So what confusion can be then then bring in the country if we went ahead with it? The confusion? Mm. Really? <laughs> Are you asking? I'm asking. Give me another program, sir. <laughs> Give me another program. But I've given you one. There can be anarchy in this country if we are not careful. Because people who think they will not be allowed to do certain things, they will be going on the street. It's not allowed. Let's, let's just be normal and reasonable people. We have a constitution, a functioning constitution. There's nothing urgent about amendment, amending the current constitution. Why, why are we in the rush? What's the point? What's the rush? We're dealing with the law. It's not, let me tell you something which maybe Zambians may not understand. The 1964 Zambian constitution, uh, we never elected a president. It may come as a surprise to some people. But this is constitutional law 120 at law school. We never elected Kenneth David Kaunda to be the president. Kenneth David Kaunda was imposed on us because he came as a president named in the constitution by the Brits. We had a lot of people looking around to tell us what their interest was at the Lancashire discussions historically. We had the nationalists who just wanted power for the sake of power. The colonialists, the National Party at the time, wanted two things in that constitution. One, a referendum clause. Number two, property rights to be embedded in the constitution. And obviously civil rights, which is Bill Part, part 3 of the, the constitution. They, in, they insisted on that. Then you had the Barotse, the Lewanika kingdom, who said no, the king in the Barotse area must control the waters, the timber, the fishes, and some of the minerals up to Nkana in Kitwe. They thought because he stood on an auntie and said, Fale, it meant that far. And the Muzungu thought his kingdom reigned up to that point. So these interest groups were taken care of and were given this constitution. What happened in 1969? KK came up with a referendum to end all referendums, except not to that touch the Bill of Rights. That's the problem. This is, this is history. Read it. Now we have allowed every president who walks in there to amend any part of this constitution. No. We should go back to the 1964 constitution. You don't touch the constitution. It's such a sacred document that you don't just amend it. If you want to amend any portion, but why do you must go for a referendum. Why have we allowed them piecemeal changes here and then suiting a person who's ruling us. It be, happened in 1996. Be, no, 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 no. Go back to 1971. Uh -huh. When the one party participatory democracy was introduced by KK. Mm. It started then. When he killed the referendum. Because any change in the constitution needed a referendum. KK came and said, no, no, I'm abolishing all political parties. There shall only be one political party. Therein lies the problem. So now, since, have been allowed since to then, the every president who yeah. comes in sees the advantage and he thinks he can touch the constitution, touch the constitution, massage it to suit himself. We should go back to that pre-independence stature and say for any amendment in the constitution, any amendment in the constitution, we must hold a referendum. Not just Bill 10, no something, something commission, something, something, no, 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 no. no. It is too important a document to be left to the fancies and whims of individuals called uh, members of parliament or NDC, NFC, or what, uh, not NDC, but some confusion, NCC, something. No, but parliamentarians, it's not their right. And to, to, do what? to do what? I mean, to, to make a law. To make laws, laws. Not to amend <laughs> the constitution at will and will. No. Any act of parliament, they're allowed. No one is going to stop that. But the constitution, that I'm talking about the constitution. To touch the, the constitution, supreme law of that's the, what the ground norm that gives the foundation of every other law. You just don't just amend it. No, you don't. You must be serious. Half those people in parliament there, some of them don't even know what they read. I'm sorry to insult some of them, but I know it's a fact. I know the history of some of these people who call ministers today. I know where they came from. You remember before 2016, the old man was saying, my MPs are useless. Some of them are back there. The same useless people. Let's be serious. These are politics. We need a certain level of understanding. It's not just a... 
being a minister does not make you a leader. I'm sorry, my brother. Status is not leadership. It's just a. It, 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 it's, it's just a status a, symbol. That's all. No, doesn't make you a leader. It's just a position. It's just a position. That doesn't make you a leader. No, I'm not. I'm not moved because someone holds a position. I am moved by the quality of discourse that I'm going to have with somebody. The quality of interaction I'm going to have with somebody. The, in, the kind of interaction and discussion I'm going to have with somebody. The mindset is what I'm interested in. Some of these people, they've come here, they've told you, I'm number one bootlick. You want to hear that from a minister? Let's be real. Is that the quality we're talking about? At least they're honest that they're bootlickers. That's <laughs> my point, but if you're a bootlicker, keep life. it in your mind. We don't want to hear it. Pretend you can think. Pretend. You know, there's a saying that when a fool keeps quiet, even the wise men think he's wise. But when you speak, hallelujah. At least you've told us who you are. Now, um, recently, uh, uh, the president was booed somewhere in among the southern province. Would you say, is that a sign of dissatisfaction among Zambians over his leadership? Or, I mean, is there anything wrong for people to react in <laughs> such a manner? <laughs> The president was booed. Uh, yes and no. Again, history will guide here, Zach. Look, I was at university when we pelted, booed, and scorned Kaunda with eggs, banana peels, and whatever. He was coming to watch a football match. He still watched the football match. Magnanimously, he still he sat and watched the whole game, shook the hands of each player and kicked the ball to start the game. Like nothing had like happened. Like nothing had happened. That is leadership. Booing a president is an expression of your will. You're trying to show that you are an individual, a person who's not happy about something. Booing by itself is not an insult. But it is trying to convey a message to somebody that I'm not happy about something. Now, I remember I saw a clip of Honorable Jack Mwimbo, and I think was it Honorable uh, Garin Combo. They were complaining about certain acts that were done in their so-called stronghold before the presidential visit. Mm. The, the pulling down of UPND flags, defacing of some of their campaign regalia, etc. And you don't expect when you annoy people like that to go in and they should be clapping for you. No. They were reacting because they were angered by something. That is the way I understood it. And for me, I expected the president to go in there, commission the homes or the houses for the police, and come out and be presidential about it. Laugh about it. All this talk of no, HH cannot go here, HH cannot go in this part of the country, we are overreacting. And if somebody says no, lines have been drawn Which now, lines? So we are one, Zambia, comes, one nation. The author won't be allowed to leave. To campaign this and is, do something. This is what kind of leadership is This it? is ignorance of the West Order. Any Zambian is allowed to visit any part of the country. There is an AGM for the Law Association of Zambia going on in Southern Province in Livingston this weekend. I can go to last. So the PF, uh, no, no, the PF cadres who feel no, 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 that was disrespect of the highest level. They shouldn't do that to their president. They feel angered, though, so they want to react. What, what would you say to them? My advice, both to the Patriotic Front and the UPND cadres, is calm down. Take an Ebola punch. This country does not belong to UPND alone. This country does not belong to PF alone. It belongs to every Zambian. And every Zambian has a right to speak his mind, visit, do what he wants, conduct his business without you interfering with his space. Having said that, the two parties must stop being aggressive against each other. They should not promote anarchy. There is no need. Then who's to blame for that? You must, so much fight. No, 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 no. you must fight, but fight with your mind. Fight with your mind. So it should be a battle of mind. Battle of mind. Not the, the battle. Physical. No, no, no. 
ukulalwa uru burifiko i'm not interested in fighting myself if your ideas are far much better than me i'll salute you i'll salute you and i'll tell you you're better than me but i am not going to sit and allow people to get physical when there's no need to get physical tamaka tafya kuchita anyone who says anything against president lungu you must rise up president lungu is protected by the police the army the air force he is protected it doesn't need so it's not your job, it's not your job to do it no Kanganja is there, the IG. He's, he can do what he wants to do. He can go and watch the videos and he, if they, they think this was over the board, they can arrest those individuals. That's it. But to say that those people cannot protest? No. But who gives the cadre so much power? To it is the, the politic- it time. is the politicians. They have not educated their cadre from both sides. Both, 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 mm-hmm. both sides. Both sides. Both sides. Both sides. And that's what I'm saying. They should not promote anarchy in this country. Some of us are civilized human beings. We want to be civil in our conduct. We want to understand that UPND, PF, NDC, PDP, whichever, they can coexist for the sake of this nation. And as long as you've got the best brains running the government, let it be. That's it. This is the hot seat and shortly will be opening the lines now. Uh, the presidency has come under criticism again after it means that the photos that were used on the Facebook page for the Kafiwa Mazabuka Road were plagiarized. Are the, <laughs> are the president's handlers doing their job or where, where are we going? You know, it's like, it's like a circle <sighs> sometimes. No? <laughs> Zach, that's a very good question, but I cannot speak for the handlers of the president. <laughs> I will leave it there because okay, uh, 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 they, that's their job. Okay. And I, I'm very good at reading social media every so often. And I'm glad I think the president was magnanimous to admit that there was a wrong post, which is good. Uh-huh. He came out openly and just said, look, there was a mistake. And it should end there. Now let's look at the, the issue of the health minister, Dr. Chitaluchi Mufia, who has continued to serve despite facing corruption charges. With Zimbabwe's president, I mean, having sacked his health minister for engaging in corruption. Do you think uh, we are doing the right thing when it comes to the fight against corruption? In this <laughs> yes and no. When you are being political, as the president is trying to be in this country, he should either suspend or drop my young brother, Chitamichiru, on moral ground but also on political grounds. It sets the tone of behavior for the ministers. But when you're trying to be legalistic and trying to say the constitution, the constitution, most of the decisions that pertain to ministers' appointments are moral. And as president, you have a moral duty to act and set the moral compass of this country in terms of how ministers will be expected to behave. I don't believe that uh, my brother Chishimbagambwiri was given that opportunity. I don't believe my sister Erin Kawan she was given that opportunity. So why is Chitotela and uh, Chitaluchirufia being given that privilege of remaining in office? These are double standards. You must be principled do what's good for the goose and make it good for the gander. Be principled and be equal to everybody. Do not show that you are discriminating in your leadership. That's what I see here. There's a problem. So the president is being selected? He is. With the greatest respect to my brother, my learned colleague, the president of this country, Edgar Shagalungu, he has been selected on that score. It is wrong. He should be presidential and political. Drop him. If you need him, bring him back. We saw it in the Kaunda days. Kaunda would fire a minister sitting in the front row of the press conference. Nine months later, you hear a press brief again, and the old man will be saying, the young man who took to the bottle, he has reformed. He has reformed. I'm giving him second chance. Second chance. I'm bringing him back. We've heard this before. If you need Chitabu Chinufia that much, drop him. Let the investigations go. Let the trial go. If it's done, bring him back if you need him. But don't keep him. What message are you sending? 
First of all, it intimidates. So what does that say about uh, the fight against corruption? It intimidates. If you still keep somebody who's being I mean, there was a screaming headline the other day: "Chitaluchurufia innocent," according to State House. The state, the president didn't say Chitaluchurufia is innocent. It's because the, the trial, job no, the trial job. hasn't even taken place. Mm-hmm. All the president did was just quote the constitution. The constitution says you're innocent until proven guilty. That's all the, con- the president was saying. But he doesn't say that Chitaluchurufia is innocent. He has to go through the due process. The trial has to go on. So let's not have these screaming headlines which mislead people. And sometimes you people in the media also, you, you give these screaming headlines. And you want people to get excited and to ah, because every media house has got their own agenda. Correct. Yes. Yes. That's the thing. And that and the problem is we don't control your headlines. That's for the sub editors or editors, whichever. The sometimes thing. people just want numbers. They want to exactly. Share. Ah. Yeah. And some of the media people we also know they give you headlines which you want depending on whether or not they've taken Tungwe. Now uh, the youth demonstrating in the bush. Mm. After they were denied a permit to pass <laughs> over the many challenges they are facing, mm. what do you think is the solution to the challenges young people are facing in our country? Mm. I want one for some mumpanga. First of all, <laughs> in a country I, I, called I, I, a democracy. Let, 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 let me let me give some advice to my young brother, the Minister of uh, uh, Home Affairs, Honorable Kampiong. There is no need to abuse state machinery. You have the police in full force driving up and down the streets of Lusaka as if there are riots going on. There's no need. When you begin to annoy the youth and they begin to think and feel, they have no option but to go to the bush. You're digging your own grave and the grave of your political party. Don't think in this day and age we are going to be having the rallies that we used to have in the days of Vasat with the COVID-19. It won't happen. The youths talk to themselves on social media. That is why they were able to beat you at your own game. You went in town parading motor vehicles, dressed in armored vehicles and dressed in combat, looking so foolish. The youths were dancing somewhere else and there were 300,000 people watching them on Facebook. How foolish can you be? People can talk to each other and they can circumvent the public order act without you even knowing. You can have a meeting, you can have a virtual rally in this day and age. That is why some of these people in the PF leadership are backward. They think it's those days. No. There's people talking to each other without even you meeting without you even having a face-to-face interaction. You can talk to a million people. Let's start changing our system of approach. And if you don't know what to do, ask. Some of us are ready to educate you. I'm not trying to insult my young brother, Honorable Kampiongo here. I'm just trying to give advice. He should change his tactics. His language has become confrontational. His language has become aggressive, even to his fellow members. I've seen clips, for instance, where he's holding meetings, even in Chuangan, his own constituents, he's threatening people with arrest. Some old man puts up a hand and wants to ask him a question, oh, not quite a police pan, just because you're Home Affairs Minister? When does that start and end? Now, can you imagine that person being given more power? Let's be serious. My advice is when you're a minister, read the law. Ask for advice get a think tank around yourselves and ask how can I resolve this matter how do we do this you can't be blocking every application that asks for a permit peaceful protest is part of a democratic dispensation if that was not the case there wouldn't be change of leadership change of political parties to rule this country we were allowed by the movement for multi-party democracy at least I remember Vasata was on radio almost every second week going across the country to talk to the Zambian people. He was not arrested. No. He was allowed to speak. Demonstrations were on and off. He was allowed to speak. Let the youth speak their mind. That's what leadership is. If possible, meet them. What are you scared of? 
When people begin to get afraid to meet even the youth, it means there's something wrong. Something to the core is wrong. Like I said, leadership is not status. You can be given a ministerial position, but you're still not a leader. You're a boss. There's a difference. This is the hot seat. Let's allow our callers to be part of this discussion. Feel free to hit us on 0974-870-877. Now, you can wear your headset so that you can be able to hear the callers. These ones? Yes, yes. You listen to the hot seat on Hot FM 87.7. It's time for you to call now and get involved. Call now. Thank you so much for coming through. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'll be talking a lot of sense. Okay. But, yeah. And I'm still at the, at the program. Now my question is, now what if it appears bad from Danny in here? I got from your own party. You see, I'm coming for a forming another party. And then, um, um, uh, uh, I'm a PM supporter as well, but let me say, you made me, they hate the PM so political, but I feel like politicians, they are good at talking, but it comes to the nation, oh man, we are so poor. So I think from now on, I'm convinced that now, politicians are all the same, and I'm so voting. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much. <laughs> A disgruntled citizen, <laughs> 0974-870-877, that's the hotline. Mm -hmm. Call us and uh, be part of this discussion. Please go ahead, your name, sir. Alex? Hello? Yeah, Alex, who? And then you Alex. Ramon, sir, please go ahead. And the uh, yeah, you are the the PM, you are 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 the PM, then you are number of Queen Anomba, a touch of talking, talking, no, that's not good. And whatever what is happening, God is watching. You know, the Bible says God is not a man. Well, you can, uh, you can mock him, you know. If you tell you as far as it is, you can be here, but tomorrow will be somewhere else. So at least we should go, we should go lead by example. Let's see how much it is. So, <laughs> 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 I want to say something which might sound controversial again here in answer to your question. But the truth is, as it stands today, if you read the party constitution for the PF, Article 52, Sub Clause 8, Sub Clause 10, and Sub Clause 11, you will find this revelation. Today, the PF has no president. Why do I say that? We went in 2014 to elect a president for the party. 2014, because we to October. We elected Walungu Mu December 2014 as party president. The PF constitution says the person elected as party president will hold office for five years. On the 20th of January 2015, Walungu Valley elected 
for the first time in office. 11th August 2016, he got elected for the second time into office. We did not go for a convention again because the five years hadn't lapsed. Now, if you allow me to count, and the articles I've said to you now, 2014 we elected Balungu, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, December. Five years ya Balungu as party president for PF, Yari Bwa. So the PF today, according to this constitution, has no party president. What we have is a Republican president. Because he was elected in 2016, and his mandate as Republican president comes to an end in 2021. That I have no problem with. That is why, when I was announcing my candidature to run for office in April last year, I was announcing because there was a vacancy in the party for the presidential p p position. People keep asking me, but why are you trying to challenge Valungu? There is no challenge. There's a vacancy. How do you challenge when there's a... You and the other people are going to get a job, you guys are going to get a job, you guys are going to get a Do you understand? Let's be serious. So when I said I want to stand, it's because there was a vacancy. So as far as I'm concerned, I am vying for that position because there's a vacancy. But I want to bring a different brand of leadership to the party. What about people who feel you are cantankerous? <laughs> Those people, I have no answer to them because as far as I'm concerned, most of them are noisemakers. And most of them are those people I was telling you about, members of Central Committee, who are nominated, who have never been elected. Their nominations have no foundation. Because the President can only nominate three members of Central Committee. So the other extras he has nominated, go and read the Constitution. Where have they come from? Let's not rape the Constitution. It's a groomed norm for the party. We must obey it. So, leadership change is inevitable. What is more important also is, this Article 52, Article Subclause 8, 10 and 11 of the party constitution must be read in tandem with Article 106, Subclause 3 of the Republican Constitution, which says, once you are elected, as a person to stand for the PF presidential candidature. You must also qualify under the Republican Constitution. That is what disqualifies Walungu currently, on both sides. Okay? He cannot stand in the party, because if you left him in the party, it means he has to qualify in the Republican Constitution, where he doesn't qualify. So he's not eligible. No one is challenging Valungu. Valungu to me is not a factor. Why do you keep talking about him? I don't even understand. That's my comment. But Alex Mwansa, do unto others, I totally agree with you. I am only happy that you're not saying do as I say, like Varianji Kwiti. This is the office. Let's continue taking in calls. 0974-870-877. Uh, you're through to the problem. Thank you for coming through your name. Why do you sound like you're very far? Can you get close to your phone? Zulu Joseph, please go ahead. Speak up, Joseph. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to the side of the side. Okay, I'm going to go to the side of the side. I'm going to go to the side of the side. Okay, I'm going to go to the side of the We take in the call 0974870877. That's the hotline. Feel free to call if you've got any questions or you want to make any contribution right here on the hot set. 0974870877. Thank you so much for coming through. All right, that one cuts 
870-877-877. That's the hotline. You through? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Your name, sir. Good morning at the Ish 91. Been well. Been well. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Been well. Hey, the <laughs> governor of democracy. Let's go ahead. Let's hear you. democracy, democracy, Truly, let me, uh, Mr. Kedip, let me begin by saying you are a man on the board. You have started being around you and you have been very quiet. That's how leadership should be. You were around you, I think, by last year, around you this year, as a member of any government. It's only of two things. Now, uh, my, my concern, truly I am a PF supporter myself. I, I voted for PF in 2011 and 2015 and 16, but this time I am, I am a relaxed time. Can we see again? Give me an, I mean, a vote in 2021. Not until you correct the mistakes what you are talking about. Truly, there is not a mistake to hear. And look, we want to tell you about the most drama comments that they should have about the most drama comments that they should have about the But what they think, uh, but he was not to feel what. So, but 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 the KPF will be wrong. But where are the PF? The KPF to relax the team. We just go to the fire. We win, win, win. The KPF not work out. We win. We not win. We face a problem. We come to be a problem. No. Do you understand? This is democracy. Democracy. We have to do it. We have to say, I win, win. I just prove. We want to win. We want to get out of this. Now, now we win. The KPF is going to be a problem. No, he's going to just give you that chance. Democracy is very, very capable. So this one is democracy, and the party is all party should be democratic. Let me wear my penis, what do you want to say to Kama? He is so I said, what do you want to say? I have a good one for you. What do you want to say to me? What do you want to say to me? I'm not going to say to me, I'm not going to say to me. It is my prayer that somewhere along the line reason will prevail and we shall see sense in what everyone is saying. I want us to work together. Trust me. That is why I've been very slow in trying to rush to court. Because I've been very slow. Not that I don't have the facts. Not that I can't fight legally. I've been practicing law for over 34 years. I'm quite experienced. I've got friends who are lawyers. Some of them state council who have been prepared. And they've told me, take them on. And I've said, not now. Let's see if we can resolve these matters administratively. Because I understand that that Because we And he stood on an antiu every so often vasata. Vale tuweva. Ichina mupangila te chandi. Ngamuafilwa luenu. He said those words. Some of us, tuwalikala papansa kana kashkuru, kare funda. You hear mkala mbanga lelanda. So I agree with you that we should work together. And I want to work together. But I will not be untwisted on principle. 
nga vile vya ishile nkashia ndi mumbibiri ati alembe fengi kalata ati achita apologize what am i apologizing for apologizing for what for having an ambition you apologize ngana ulufianya you don't apologize for thinking right you don't so i am prepared to listen and yes if phone calls are made and i shall i have said i'm on a very wide consultative process right now never pf bende nkabachita consult nothing will stop me from calling my president edgar lungwa zain let's have a chat if he doesn't want to see me that's his business but for me i'll call him if he says come let's chat we shall talk if we agree we agree if we fail to agree on principle we shall disagree i shall tell the nation not to kana na tuesha na filikwa that's the way men behave but in ancient land that's the norm for you i don't just wake up na mboku landa na ndetive na you must think before you speak you have been well as a student of democracy i salute you na temwa sana pantu wa mashwe mwa bomfia na inewe ne ava mutima wandi e ava mpashu wandi ndefo a democracy muli chinwe chalo it ye pantanshi we must not fight against ambition no we must allow everybody to feel free to pursue their ambitions and i thank you let's take in a few more calls before we conclude thank you so much for coming through hello good morning thank you so much for coming through your name sir Mr. Daka please go ahead. Mbuya. Mbuya tilibu ina mulibu anje mwero. Mm. Ibatie. Mm. Eh, mwanzo mzani la pati, alikuwa ni jana to enter the convention. I see. Thank you. So that's my question. Okay. Alright. Ziko mo. Zero nine seven four eight seven zero eight double seven. That's the hotline. Feel free to call us. You're through to the program. Hello, good morning. Morning, morning. Hello. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mwe ba na nishlam kwa? Vice John. Hmm. Landen tu kwa vice John. Walendo kwa jista kete Kani kambile pa news walendo kwa chubunga na kwa uesha Na honga mwa uesha Pa PF basa mbio honga pa kwa kipa 60 Tengo kwa sata kwa mbio honga Na honga kwa kisafuka kuma 175 na 195 Na honga kwa kwa kisafuka kwa kisafu ndo kwa 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 Nisala wa resta kitu, nisala mzangia ili kula umulangi wa kwa chunga na nishwa Mbani kwa yati kwa yati kwa yati kwa apeshi kwa 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 nureji Peni tika langana sifuwa Kuma nani kwa nukua wawanda wali mwesha Pati wali mzangia tawago shisha Wala mkuhunda Nga mkuhu mwesha If we adama taxi drivers Wange tulipaya Nkono minayi wale la panshi umulangi wa korona Nishwa yati sumu kishani So please, people of God, for the spirit of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, I support you. Please, please, to land in the comfort of God, it's a good spirit, ウルウィンボンシュロチェンマンディンゴウルウィンボンシュマンディンゴアチチニエンゴあオッケーアトワンコンコイアハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
ba president ba kwata maka ugusalama members of central committee batatu aba shala they must be elected at the general conference there has never been a general conference since 2011 mu patriotic front to elect members of central committee so which central committee expelled me these people who have been brought in na labwe kesha tu ila angasha constitution constitution ya party chimona constitution ya chalo tu ila angasha kwa tule hutai yo tule vele ngol papulolo if there was anybody called a legal advisor kuri wa president ngali beba di fina mulufyanya afi ni na chikondorola elo ba sateva chitire nominate abantu 10 ukufo ku bapangama minister au deputy minister twali wa tumine phone kana besa maka mwako atani 8 bali uwesha bali ba tulupa pulona lukana even here my older brother the president of the republic edgar shagalungu knows how many members of central committee he is allowed to nominate he can't go beyond that you can't keep nominating nominating is going to turn out to be a dictatorship because what i want to lay later they will only be loyal to you they have no legality they have no jurisdiction therefore to pass any judgment on any member so he expulsion ya bufi okay na dikana but if we don't agree mufi on deland and they force me ukuya ku court to alambo kuseva nyechipani these are things we can discuss in house fwebene ulupa pololo aliland that we can discuss these matters not you kwa vyo mtu atio lemba karata uchi apologize ule chi apologize kuri chinji ni nani na tukile chilu bonchi na pangile kuchana na cha ku apologize ndimo ina kristu i can apologize if i'm wrong but ina kucha ku apologize because you want to show that now kwataka power na kan because there must be principle in what i do i'm a principled person that you must take in buya so ichi we shall be discussing in buya mwisa kama na we shall continue talking atin by everyone I'm a taxi driver from Livingstone, Lusaka through to the Copper Belt. I've been talking to a lot of you. I know also mle chula. Mimi ndishiwa kwa ti ichalona chupa muvike pona COVID-19 eh eh ama lwele aya isa abantu tabalenda sana cha chupa. Chishinka ubunga tabuli bwino yo. Imitengo tabuli bwino. But the answer to this is not a piecemeal solution. The answer is a radical transformation of the economic setup of the nation we must get down to production that is why mulupa pulo rwandi ribuku na lemba zambia must prosper too i have articulated concepts of how we can improve productivity in the agriculture sector which will improve the living standards of the zambian people the food basket must come down my aim for instance is that for anyone to live comfortably in this country any family of at least 5 people they must be a take home pay, pay of at least 10000 kwacha if he instance kwete but kuti na lon dollar mwamfwa i'm sure he stay in big case so ni mwamfwa ba israel ni mwisa kamana na ma taxi driver bambi ve sakamana ba mini bus driver ba nensu wonse ve sakamana fila fine twale angala na basa tabale mi batifika chitika nifi eko twala abwerela bali aba shire fo kutukonka tukabasha kunuma because right now we are marching back to more money in people's pockets less taxes and zambia must prosper too is a blueprint that will give every zambian taxi driver minibus driver and every other informal sector worker that hope that the chalo chesu kutwa ikala win inacho nde mulaya ngamulefu amke say but mwi book ndi enu page shine mwana ndiriat that is why i put it in writing so that you can quote me njiletina yo i can do it Okay, I've got some other questions here. This one says, what is his view on the Chinese contractors uh, being given all contracts and Chinese competing with uh, the Zambians when it comes to selling chickens and vegetables? What law will he propose to safeguard our jobs as Zambians? Chinese are given preferential treatment. And also, can you, if uh, invited by HH, run as his run meet? Let me start with the Chinese. Ama Chinese wane mufuile mwansho kweba techo beshira kuno besa mkupanga kalo sangu Second of all kumwa boko ba fuma vengi sana ama Chinese vengi so they would try and do anything 
But the situation is this. If you put policy in place that is going to safeguard the Zambian business through one, the immigration laws that you have, two, the, Co the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry, it will be very easy to curb Ama Chinese. First of all, those coming into this country to come and to come and invest, you must have a criteria. It's not every Tom, Dick and Harry who comes into this country or to get an investor. Vamo, they are not investors. No. Vasatavale Tila, my investors. They have come to invest. There was a reason for that. It sounded political, but we cannot give every job to the Chinese. Not that we want to chase them away, but the Chinese must come here with skill, with investment portfolios that we as Zambians don't have. If you are Zambians, we are not Chinese. Now, if you my industry, for instance, I have a Chinese Mugodi, for instance, I have a Chinese You say by immigration standards, as a policy, 5% of management will come from China. 5%. 10% of middle management should come from China. The rest must be Zambian. That must be in the policy. Nero mule pela immigration permit, yeah, work permit, investment permit, nangwicha shala permit, mwinga, whatever you call it, resident permit. The point is you must not give more than that for a company. So that if I have to go to Zambia, these are the rules, these are the regulations, and I must follow. If they don't want to come, bye-bye, we shall develop this country ourselves. We are not short of manpower. We've got educated youth from the University of Zambia in the mining sector. We've got mining engineers, we've got metallurgists, we've got geologists. We can exploit the Zambian minerals ourselves. In Zambia must prosper too. I have tackled the mining sector. This is very clear. But naturally, I was accepted. Now, my economic arguments, I need another four hours just to argue that. So that Mumfwe. But I'm trying to touch here and there so that Mumfwe. So, you know, I'm going to say that 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 I'm It's not right. It's not correct. And I shall not allow it. Number two. I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm Alo kuwambela chapa mwuma political setup. Mwule mwunesha na historio for chava. Nga mwalumbulo mwuntu nga HH. Yeah, HH is my brother. Tuwa ina ngupa university. Okay? I know the guy. I know how he thinks. But here's a bit of history. One. He had Kanishas Banda. As his vice president. Kanishas Adikwiz. Go and ask Kanishas. He had GBM. As his vice president. GBM Adikwiz. Go and ask him. He is now talking to my brother Chimbakambwiri. I don't know what they have agreed. Mwe. To alikuwe tepo na kapakt na HH eleva mdala wa satavari alive. There was a pact between UPND and PF. And we said to alachi tesi. Let's move in this direction. HH. Tafuwa yana ngumo kuwa on top of him. Now. In your muntu lefuwa kuntungula. From now onwards. I have made up my mind. He must prove better than me in thinking, in planning, in strategies, and his approach to the whole nation. But there what time to HH and Angubadi have a mukutuka? Nishwa mukutukila because some of them are in London. They've told me why. Couldn't I post some kind of kankala? Elon Bench. Elon Bench. The way the constitution is structured today, could we have a pillar with vice president if you feel? And my idea is now that the Zambia must prosper too. I heard you. Vice President Takwa Tamaka. Could you have parking a mukona? Tapai nevio le umfo, nevio le chita. Unless the president delegates for you what to do, you cannot do anything as a vice president. You're there to deputize. So, instro elefu wa iko apa, eh, kuvumbela chapamu. Lelo wa mova mona ngamule sala tu kuvumbela chapamu. Ngatwa kumana. Chifuire wonse tu wa tu wika ma egos yensu aside wonse. Let us choose between and among us ourselves panel who in Gatungulula if we in Gatrifo care forward. Not your only neighbor president come and join me. Uh uh. Nkae Polina Mchulongum. Nakana San is a chin. Tetifumbe. Because I know from the history. Ever twice get in our Sata, HH Vice Ups and our Sata, Vasata by two of Ops. Namalu Shapama social media. Call back a picture. Kalam Delava Guy Scott. Navasata. 
the two of them wale ndoko kuside kule crowd bafu mine committing na HH they looked like they were lone rangers lost in a cause because they couldn't agree twalibe puishe shukuru usha committing yo kumwachia fiachi bashiani bai salon do raven uyu muntu tete tuombe na nkwebani ama reasons 1 2 3 4 5 mwika ibe paiyo aba lefu kuomba na HH bafu ile batampa from a position of zero He has been a president of that party for almost 14 15 years. I salute him. But that doesn't mean he is better than some of us in thinking. No. That doesn't mean he has better plans than some of us. No. That does, the only thing ninga sali utako in HH is eh alikuwa told bio kunchila. I don't know how he made his money, but alikuwa told bio kunchila. Hicho na salute. Na zarano kuzara. But money is not leadership. Just like status is not leadership. Leadership is about character. Leadership is about vision. Leadership is about the ability you have to serve the nation. I have a vision for this country and I want to serve this country. I may not have the money, but nalikuwa tamanu. Le sadi mpela vision. Nishi nala iposa mkano kankala. Apope na munjeleleko. Your concluding remarks? Zambians Therefore kumwebo kwebat in me you have a friend you have a friend who understands the history of this country in me you understand that inena imokutuamba ni chibusa tuombe ni chapamo i want the common man on the street to know kuri umuntu kwete chirilishi icha vasata ichirilishi ezo twa imishe pf kwebat if we to pirule chino chalo abantu abashire fo kumfwa be umfwa batila ama twi yale suka kuli wamo batinga baumfu tafika la fila fumu bari ala kweti ama twina womfwe kaitu to amulisa mfwe tatupula sala tatupwa hiyo aba shire fo ku mfalo wabo i am giving myself up to leadership in this country and i'm saying to all of you let us not just say tulefu a leader for the sake of leader mule to chita examine if we ngama leaders aba le fo kutungulule chama Finch alela ndapo yu muntu afu makwi bujeti alela ndakuti achita ulupapulo kuti alukonka the constitution we is he going to keep his word some people kuti mwana fiyo kutali ati apa fika shuba for me ni kwata zambia must prosper one na zambia must prosper two hold me accountable to these two books my vision for this country is embedded there it is clear My names are Kelvin Fuwewat and I am running for president. Thank you so much. Do you have it and nothing much to say. Keep it right here. This is hot number one for news and entertainment.